There are some really cheap flights right now to Iceland, especially through budget airlines like Wow Air. I went from Toronto, Canada to Reykjavik, Iceland for only $99 one way. <laughs> that being said, once you arrive in Iceland, things tend to get a little bit pricey. Just to give you an idea, I had just this like normal sized burger and fries, and the fries weren't even large. And it cost me 25 US dollars. And this was at the cheapest restaurant I could find. So it's definitely a lot more pricey to eat out in Iceland. And even the grocery store prices are pretty, pretty much like double what they would be in the US. That's mainly due to the fact they have to import like everything. So make sure you budget appropriately. Past the edge of the sky. Hey everyone, I'm here in Reykjavik, Iceland. I'm in front of one of the really cool, famous churches, as you can see behind me. Um, it's awesome looking. I just got here and it is pretty nice out today, actually. It's, it's maybe in the low 50s, um, a little windy, uh, very overcast, but uh, beautiful weather and it is June. So nice light jacket we're good to go um, checking out the church it's a really quick walk away from the BWI bus stop uh, you can just walk there it's like a 10 minute walk uphill and I'm gonna do that before I go on my tour but you found the key beneath the debris to free and release the way You flew on past the edge of the sky. The air is so amazing here. It's so clean. Very crisp feeling like it just snowed. So now I'm in front of Eric, who is the Viking who discovered Iceland. There's nothing that screams tourists like walking around with a dog stick. <laughs> this is like a cool little um, grocery store, so I'm gonna check it out, see if there's anything, you know, buy a banana or something for my lunch. So, my travel tip for you today is to bring energy bars with you on the plane and to bring about like one per day. And you can put these on your carry-on or on your checked-in bag and that way when you get hungry and especially when you're in these touristy areas and there's all that like good smelling food it also tends to be the most expensive areas to eat so in order to be happy you have to you know for me like I am grumpy when I'm hungry so in order to keep me happy I always keep those energy bars they can be a meal supplement or they can just hold you in between meals or once I leave the touristy areas I can either go home and cook something or go to a restaurant in a less expensive area that being said be careful about what you try to take into a country most countries do not allow you to bring any types of fruits or vegetables they don't let you bring meats um, and that includes like canned or dried meats or fish so keep the foods that do not include these categories, otherwise you'll, they'll get confiscated and you're going to have to throw it in the trash anyway, and that does not save you money for throwing away food. Um, you can bring things like peanut butter to jelly sandwiches, however, because peanut butter is not technically a solid, it can be a liquid, if it's not the, um, if the size is too large in your, on your take-on, sorry, on your carry-on bag, they'll toss it, which happened to me one time. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Um, so either make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or just have small packs of peanut butter within the appropriate size. You can bring, like I said, energy bars are amazing. I love them. I bring about like one per day and that really helps me get through the day and save me a lot of money. Um, also, I like bringing trail mix or nuts with a chocolate because I love chocolate and <laughs> you can never go wrong. 
When you're in Iceland though, you do have to try their soups. They are really phenomenal and they always taste good on a cold day. They also sell the shark meat. It comes in like this little itty bitty cube. It's literally the size of a penny. And this stuff, like it comes in this mason jar and you just open it up and woof, like it just like takes your breath away. It smells like rotten fish. Like it's just like, <gasps> it's, it's pretty bad guys. So do yourself a favor and the waiters I'm sure will warn you, but try not to breathe just just eat it because <laughs> when in rome or when in iceland you gotta try it they also have this shot of what they call black death it's similar to vodka but like more like whiskey it is really strong so if you're over 18 and you drink alcohol it's something you just gotta do it's it's Probably the strongest drink I've ever had, and I'm definitely not going to drink it again because I did not like it, but it is definitely an experience. <laughs> I'll put it that way. And yeah, that little piece of shark meat and that one shot cost me $20. It's not uncommon for drinks to be $15, $20. So I did not do like any drinking in Iceland. No, I was pretty sober. <laughs> Another quick tip to save you some money when you're in Iceland is to not tip. <laughs> Tipping in Icelandic culture is completely optional. Icelandic people do not tip. A lot of tourists do tip because they're just used to it where they're from. A, tipper, a typical tip in Iceland is anywhere between 10 and 15 percent. That's usually at nicer restaurants. But it's completely voluntary. So only feel like you want to tip if they did exceptional service or if you just want to be a nice person and give them a tip. Um, it is welcomed, however, it is completely optional. There are many places around the world, unlike the U.S., where tipping is built into the menu. For instance, places like Australia, Japan, South Korea, France, none of these places you do not tip. There are many more countries in the world that do not tip, and it's, it's just weird for them to even tip, because they're like, why is not the restaurant owner paying for the tip? Um, whatever the bill says, that's what it is. So sometimes the restaurant menu might look a little more expensive, but it's not because the tip is already built in. Thanks so much for watching Tamara's Travels. I really hope you enjoyed this episode and that maybe you learned something new about Iceland, or if you just hopefully got some inspiration. I am going to every country in the world, that is my dream. And so I hope you'll follow me on my journey. Be sure to subscribe below if you'd like to watch more videos like this. I'm going to be doing a couple more in Iceland, and then I'm going to be flying to Ireland. So, stay tuned.